The Muppets have always been an ensemble cast. Some characters like Kermit the Frog have strong prominent roles, while others like Lou Zealand typically get walk-on cameos. Some characters start as minor roles, but become more prominent as time goes on like Miss Piggy. But as some gain popularity, that means there's not enough space for all of these Muppets. And some have a hard time not becoming minor characters among the team. And unfortunately, that's the case for Fozzie Bear. Fozzie's original role with the Muppets was to be Kermit's best friend and right-hand man. Debuting with The Muppet Show in the 1970s, Fozzie was always seen as a failing comedian, simply adding to the anarchy that was the Muppet Show format. Fozzie's puppeteer and character creator was Frank Oz, and Frank had been one of Jim Henson's closest creative collaborators since 1963. And when Jim Henson created Sesame Street, Frank Oz saw himself across the room acting with him frequently, most notably as the odd couple spoof of Bert and Ernie. Less pizza than you have, and I have less grape juice than you have. I have less, and you have more. <laughs> oh, hey Bert, that's, that's very easy to fix, Bert. The connection that Henson and Oz have together on screen was magical. And as Henson looked towards the future in creating The Muppet Show, Frank Oz once again saw himself across the room performing with Jim Henson, as the pair would play the on-screen best friends of Kermit and Fozzie Bear. Once the show started airing though, something organic took place. Fozzie wasn't nearly as loved as some of the other characters on the show, and that included a pig that fell in love with Kermit the Frog. Miss Piggy, who was also played by Frank Oz, would grow in popularity season to season, unfortunately leaving Frank Oz's other characters to be sidelined while Miss Piggy took center stage. This isn't to say that Fozzie got any less screen time or wasn't perfected as a character. Over the course of the first season of The Muppet Show, Fozzie was refined, going from a stand-up comedian who tried too hard to land his bad jokes, to an endearing friend and lovable character, whose bad jokes became less cringy as the audience loved some of the other attributes that came with the Fozzie character. <laughs> Uh, pay no attention to them, folks. They don't bother me. I can handle hecklers in my sleep. Oh, well, don't tell that to the audience. They're asleep, too. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. The heckling from Statler and Waldorf was also seen as something to gain sympathy for Fozzie. And cameos from Fozzie's mother made him seem more relatable in a familial sense. Fozzie was always seen as insecure, adding to his need and desire to be a good comedian. He was looking for the high of laughter, and also looking for the approval of his best friend, Kermit the Frog. And as time went on, his relationship with Kermit became a callback to the classic comedic duos of Hollywood's golden age. Like how Bert and Ernie are inspired by the film and TV classics, The Odd Couple, it's not that hard to see the inspiration behind Kermit and Fozzie's relationship being a tribute to a comedic duo like Abbott and Costello. One character playing the serious straight role while the other being a clumsy dimwit. Going back to the days of vaudeville acts all the way into the 1950s, this idea of classic comedic duos was seen as top performing comedy. And Bud Abbott and Lou Costello were seen as some of the top comedians of the mid 20th century. They were one of the biggest box office draws during the 1940s and 50s and gave us many memorable comedic acts, including one of their most famous sketches, Who's on First? I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellas on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Do you know the fellas' names? Me? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean, the fellas' name on first base. Who? The fellow playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? Although Fozzie and Kermit never blatantly ripped off the who's on first routine or had their own baseball routine, their banter back and forth was typically misunderstood by Fozzie, who was using props and puns to get by with the jokes. For Kermit the Frog. Why you're for Kermit the Frog. Uh, oh, are you Kermit the Frog? Of course I am. Wire for you. <laughs> uh, 
could be. And past the Muppet Show, Fozzie would still be a major player in the original Muppet movie, continuing his friendship with Kermit the Frog. And films like The Great Muppet Caper or Muppets Take Manhattan would see him playing roles like being Kermit's brother. And as the Jim Henson Company moved into the 1980s, we saw Frank Oz take over the producer and directing duties, while still giving screen time to his characters like Fozzie and Miss Piggy. As Frank Oz gained notoriety as a director and filmmaker, he would move away from the Muppets in the 80s and 1990s. He began directing more non-Henson and non-Muppet related projects, taking up more and more of his time. And during the mid-1990s, Oz would find himself playing some of his characters on Sesame Street less, with Eric Jacobson filling in for his role. And though he was producing and puppeteering for major Muppet projects like A Muppet Christmas Carol or Muppet Treasure Island, he wasn't really available for lesser Muppet projects like ABC's Muppets Tonight. And his characters, especially Fozzie the Bear, would find themselves in less prominent roles. It was during the 1990s that a switch in performers would begin to happen for the characters that Frank Oz had made famous. Like I said before, in 1994, Eric Jacobson would come in and take over the roles that Frank Oz would normally play on Sesame Street when he couldn't make it to the studio. And before the end of the 1990s, Eric Jacobson had completely taken over all of those roles at Sesame Street. And Jacobson would begin to take over some of Oz's famous Muppet characters like Fozzie and Miss Piggy starting in 2001. He debuted as Fozzie in It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas Movie and has portrayed the character ever since. But despite having a performer that's with the character full time, Fozzie still doesn't seem to have the popularity that he once did at the beginning of The Muppet Show. Fozzie's friendship with Kermit isn't played up nearly as much as it used to be, and newer characters like Rizzo or Pepe have really taken over some of the space that Fozzie used to fit in. The one of the great strengths of Eric Jacobson is his improv, and his ability to carry some of his characters through unscripted settings. Meaning that the new Muppets Now Disney Plus show should be a great avenue for Fozzie Bear, and hopefully he can make his way back into being the lovable and insecure friend of Kermit the Frog. We've seen a little bit of this in the first few episodes of Muppets Now, but we really haven't seen Fozzie completely grasp into what used to be his popularity. So I hope that before the end of the first season of Muppets Now, we really see a return of popularity for Fozzie, especially since he can also make talk show appearances. Eric Jacobson and Fozzie have done plenty, and one of his most memorable was as a guest panelist on the Comedy Central show at midnight. Fozzie. Uh, an Animal House remake with Animal. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Kristen. Gonzo girl. Yes, <laughs> Fozzie. Miss Piggy in Silence of the Hams. All right, perfect. As we're getting into this period where streaming services have basically replaced traditional television, we're seeing a resurgence in Henson properties. Muppets Now is on Disney Plus, Fraggle Rock is on Apple TV, and even Sesame Street is at an all time high on HBO Now. And these characters and their puppeteers are consistently making the rounds to talk shows and to other outlets to advertise these new shows. It's giving opportunities to old characters to be part of pop culture once again. And hopefully Fozzie Bear can find his mark thanks to the puppeteering and performances of Eric Jacobson. And although the tragedy and fall of Fozzie Bear is because of Frank Oz's pursuits outside of the Muppets, I don't fault him at all. I don't fault him for living out his dreams, yet still giving us some of the most classic characters in the terms of Miss Piggy and Fozzie Bear. When I was a kid, everybody knew what you meant when you told a really bad joke and followed it up with the term waka waka. It was the added exclamation to that joke that you just had to tell. The phrase waka waka was truly pop culture. So hopefully Eric Jacobson can reach another generation and give them a reason to tell awfully bad jokes and follow it up with the dim-wittingly but lovable lines like Waka Waka. Thanks for watching this video. If you've never seen any of my videos before, be sure to subscribe. I've got all kinds of Disney content, everything under the Disney umbrella, uh, so says the logo. Also, if you are uh, somebody who's been around for a while, 
give this video a like and uh, be sure to check out the Patreon page because I've got all kinds of stuff going up there, including exclusive podcasts and videos. And uh, be sure to check out some of the other videos that are, are hanging around uh, at this end card. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and keep moving forward.